Hey, I didn't see you there. Yes, well, you while you're here, today's show is brought to you by the extremely kind donations by our donors over at Patreon. Andrew, tell us a little bit about Patreon. Um, Patreon is a site you can go to to donate to your favorite creators, namely us, and get a little bit of uh, some perks as well as just the knowledge of uh, knowing you're supporting us. Uh, and our current patrons are Stephanie L., Terry Needleman, Max Lunick, Benjamin Learer, Lily Ackles, Mackenzie Horner, John Donna, Taryn the Duck, Melissa Goldman, Jess Lightning, Ewan Cassidy, Haley McDonald, Teskier, Cullen McLeod, Fire Sutena, Timber, uh, pardon me, Mina Maniri, up. Monica Thoreau, Brent Black, Haley Murray, Alice in Wonderland, and B-Way Flicks. These folks give us a little extra financial support that helps us keep the lights on here at Musicals with Cheese. If you would like to join them and get tons of fun perks such as patron-only commentaries, our episodes a day early, and so much more, come join us over at Patreon. All right, Andrew, you ready to get this shit started? I'm ready to get this shit started. Hello, I'm Jesse McAnally. And I'm Andrew DeWolf. And welcome to Musicals with Cheese, the podcast where I try to get Andrew to like musical theater. How are you doing today, Andrew? Oh, God. I don't have a joke for this one. I hate Annie. (laughs) (laughs) Andrew, there is such an easy joke we could have made about this, you know? Why didn't you do it then? Um, (laughs) so this is the first episode we'll be doing in the 20s. That's true. So we're back in Annie times, guys. Yeah, and I may not have 2020 vision, but at least my <laughs> eyes aren't purely black like Annie's. No, no, Annie's eyes are just white. She has no pupils. Oh, yeah, you're right. They're just white. Oh, that's even worse. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing to relate to, just these white, soulless eyes. <laughs> that's what happens oh, when you man. become an orphan. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> so without further ado, our first episode of 2020 is Annie. It's a hard knock life for us. It's a hard knock it's life. It's a hard knock life for us. <laughs> Annie is a Broadway musical based on the popular Harold Gray comic strip, Little Orphan Annie, with music by Charles Stouse, lyrics by Martin Charnin, and a book by Thomas Meehan. The original Broadway production opened in 1977 and ran for nearly six years, setting a record for the Alvin Theater, now the Neil Simon Theater. It spawned numerous productions in many countries, as well as national tours. It won the Tony for Best Musical. The musical songs Tomorrow and It's a Hard Knock Life are among the most popular of the musical numbers. Andrew, I I know what you think about Annie. Everyone knows what everyone thinks about Annie. So I want to know your history with Annie. Okay, so I'm pretty sure I've only watched the movies. And I think up until today, I thought I had watched one movie. (laughs) about Annie and I kind of just mixed everything together and I think most people that I know have only seen the 90s one uh, mm-hmm. which came out in what 99 yes it came out um, in 99 um, directed by Rob Marshall remember... of Into the Woods fun fact yeah and whenever I um, whenever I would talk to somebody about Annie I thought we'd talk about how much Annie sucks because obviously everyone hates Annie who likes Annie it's garbage <laughs> um, hey 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 hey, then, hey 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 what some people like Annie oh sorry pardon me um but I would always bring up the scene where Annie um, Annie falls off a bridge. And everyone's like, what are you talking about? There's no part where Annie falls off a bridge. And I'm like, no, there's they're like on a bridge and like someone's trying to kill Annie. And everyone's like, what are you talking about? That doesn't happen in, in Annie anywhere. And now I get to finally say that definitely happens in Annie. Just only in one of the movies. <laughs> <laughs> Not in the other one. <laughs> Nor in the Broadway show. So for context, Andrew says he's seen the movies. That does not include the more recent 2014 version. Let's put that asterisk No, there. I have not seen the new Annie movie, which yes. I don't understand why we needed any more Annie movies. <laughs> I don't know why we have two Annie movies, and then now there's a third one, and like... <laughs> 
And none and of I them really, Andy really sucks. get the Broadway show, honestly. <laughs> okay, I don't think... I still haven't seen the Broadway show, so no. that's a, another thing. The, there were some attempts, <laughs> but that is a very hard bootleg to find, apparently. <laughs> yeah, we, we can't watch the Broadway show until yeah. we actually go and... We'll go and see it live at some point, and then we'll do another yes. episode on Annie. Yes. Um, all right, so we know Andrew's history with Annie. Um, I don't think I've really talked about Annie in any way, negative or positive, even in the days of, um, you know. See, here's here's the fun story with Jess, is that he's not going to mm-hmm. tell you, but Jess actually <laughs> played Annie in, uh, in a high school version. <laughs> No, that is not he can true. Still sing, he can still sing all the songs. <laughs> that 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 part is true, but <laughs> um, I did like it a lot as a, a, a little little tyke. Um, I was a really big fan of it, and I was like, man, why can't I play Annie? You know, in the way that when little boys say that, you're like, oh, you. <laughs> Who cares? Who would want to be Annie? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you just want to stand in the middle middle of the stage with a dog on your lap and sing out tomorrow. Don't you want that, Andrew? No. I want to sing about yesterday and how much better it was before I watched Annie. <laughs> so you want to sing Beatles songs. <laughs> 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 yesterday, the Annie film just fell away. I didn't have to watch both Annie movies in a row. <laughs> <laughs> but... I did see it live in the national tour, and the first version I ever saw was the 82 film, and then I saw the Rob Marshall 99 film, and the 99 film is closer to the Broadway show, but neither neither of them quite get it right. Like, the 82 film gets things right that the 99 film didn't get right, and the 99 film got things right that the 82 film didn't get right, and so they're neither good enough adaptations to represent the original thing, which wasn't that good to begin with. <laughs> Okay, yeah, but we're not here to discuss how close it is to the Broadway show. We're talking about how good it is, Jess. <laughs> and they both suck <laughs> in their own way. <laughs> so, instead of how we usually do, um, this is going to be a little bit more of a comparison contrast of movies, which we're bored, and we were going to do an entire month of Jan- January, but then we got bored with that <laughs> idea. <laughs> we realized there, there's probably only so much to say think- about Annie. <laughs> There's still a lot of Annie in our schedule, I think, because I'm pretty sure we're still talking about other Annie shit. I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) We're not against talking about other Annie shit, but right now, like, we're tired just from what we've seen. (laughs) Hey, happy (laughs) January. A bald billionaire. Leaping legends! And an orphan that sings. The sun will come out tomorrow. So you gotta hang on till tomorrow. It's something famous. I don't like it. Hand it back. And something brand new. You can't see it yet, but it's about to come true. The movie of tomorrow Very good. Is, is in production today. Of course, it's Annie. It's only a dream away. So, Andrew, let's start from yes. the 82 film. Um, let's just talk okay. about what your initial thoughts were on that. Because I know that wasn't what you watched first, but it's what you watched more recently. <laughs> I mean, I think in, in the grand scheme, it is what I watched first. Because okay. I, I think that movie had more of an impression on me than the 91. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so this one starred Aileen Quinn as Annie, and she does a serviceable job. Um, it had it's Anne Reinking. Um, from who is most known for being Bob Fosse's girlfriend and starring in all that jazz as Grace, um, Albert Finney as Oliver Warbucks, Tim Curry as Rooster, Carol Burnett famously as Miss Hannigan, and Bernadette Peters in a very thankless role as uh, Lily, I think her name is. Lily St. Regis. The, that character that you could just remove from the, the whole thing and whatever. Um, I'd say in this version and in the Broadway show, you couldn't. But then the 99 movie makes a stupid decision. But we'll go into that later. The 99 movie, she does not need to exist. But <laughs> yes, the 99 movie, she 100% doesn't need to exist. And this in the Broadway version. Yeah, I get it. So now that we've done all it came out in 1982 and it was directed by um John Houston, which is one of the more interesting things I learned while doing a little bit of research on this film. What has he made? Um, 
he, well, he, he made Angelica Houston <laughs> from his penis. Shut your mouth, okay? Shut my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, let's, he, get, let's dive in. He was here. in. He was in Chinatown. He's like a really big actor. He was in Orson Welles' new film that came out a few years ago. Um, he's a really big fancy actor, but he's also a director. He wrote that line very well. He's like Tom Cruise. No, 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 <laughs> no, no. Kind of like Tom Cruise. Kind of like Tom Cruise. Similar to Tom Cruise. Uh, as much as <laughs> <laughs> they both have acted in movies, yes. <laughs> <laughs> if you think anyone that's ever been in a movie is Tom Cruise yet there's a lot of people that are similar to Tom Cruise like he directed the original Casino Royale film like he's a big director that's good mm -hmm. this must All be right. his, uh, his worst movie how he worked though he works very interesting he would do one for the studio like give them the big budget feature that they wanted and then they'd give him the smaller weird indie movie that he wanted to make so this was like the one for them ah so he didn't give a shit about this one. Yeah, and you can kind of tell. <laughs> <laughs> you can absolutely tell. The only three people who give a shit about this movie is Carol Burnett, Anne Ranking, and whoever's playing Poonjab. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's just a bizarre character in, <laughs> on its own. That was another is weird... Is he from the show? No, he's from the comics. They added comic characters oh. to try to... Yes. He, he's... I mean, he's not, like, racist, I don't think, but maybe? <laughs> <laughs> racist, but maybe. Um, I think he might be. Whatever he is, he hasn't aged well. No, I mean, he's just kind of a yes man to this rich Lex Luthor type. <laughs> yeah, he's like, it's like a supervillain collection, because he also has the ass, whatever that is. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. And, and I'm... <laughs> My my headcanon for this is he is Lex Luthor. Um, <laughs> and he just happened to adopt a child. <laughs> he did one good thing, but he's also a Republican that profiteers off of, like, everyone else's suffering. Which basically yeah, lines I mean, up with everything we see in here. He's a billionaire in the Great Depression. Uh, I mean, that says like all him you at need the to end. know about He's a self-made man, Andrew. He was born an orphan and he made every dollar himself. There... There are no self-made billionaires. There are self-made millionaires, but if you're a billionaire, you stepped on somebody. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, isn't that a kind of a line from the movie? Um, maybe. Which line are like, you thinking of? Where he's like, I stepped on a lot of people to get up here, but I never thought of yeah. looking back. Something like that. Where that yeah, moment they, yeah. of self-awareness. And I wonder, I don't understand politically where this leans. I understand a lot better in the Broadway stuff, but in both movies, they kind of lean away from the political topics and just be like, ah, uh, I Roosevelt think it's shows up. Uh, FDR's here. What? Why? Who cares? FDR, he's a good guy, but like Warbucks is like talking about how he doesn't <laughs> know what Democrats eat. <laughs> <laughs> um... Yeah, and apparently Warbucks doesn't know that orphans can be any gender. It's not a gendered term. Yeah, uh, he's, he says orphans are boys. He never well, really changes his heart either. Like, he just kind of <laughs> likes Annie, and then that's it. He doesn't, nothing else changes about him. <laughs> no, no, nothing at all. He is still a horrible <laughs> war profiteering, probably asshole, who probably shouldn't yeah. have a kid. He's not going to take care of her. It's like a puppy. He's going to forget she exists after a week. No, I mean, they're tied at the hip, dude. You saw they danced at the end. I don't need <laughs> anything but you. But you. <laughs> um, what do you think of the performance? And also millions of dollars. <laughs> yeah. 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 If we, if we get hit by this recession, fuck you. You're on the street hooking. <laughs> Oh, you know, he would, too. He yells, like, most of this movie. He's just, like, <laughs> screaming about everything, all the way up to the end. Yeah. <laughs> get her! Go, go get her! <laughs> oh what do you think God. of the performances all together? Uh, okay, well, I think the main one you gotta talk about is Annie. Uh, because okay. the difference between this movie and the 99 movie is I think the Annie in this one is better. Yes. At least a little less Disney channel-y. This one feels a little grittier. singing... Their singing tone is at least a little nicer. Although there's sometimes where she goes into like this squeal almost and it's like 
Uh, Leapin' lizards! Also, leapin' lizards is not a thing anyone should ever <laughs> say, and I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think the Annie in this is a little bit a little bit more fun to watch than the 99 version, and that's good. I like Daddy Warbucks in this, because I think that he works best when he's a jerk. Yeah. And he's a big jerk in this one. Very, very like, hard to like, yes. And Miss Hannigan is way better in this one than the 99. Y- Miss I... Hannigan in this is fantastic. Carol Burnett <laughs> really brought her A-game here, and she's just a two-sheets-to-the-wind drunk woman who... She doesn't even actually any... hate the children as much as she's too drunk to give a damn. Yeah, and I feel like that works the best. Like, it, she's she's just a, a person who lives in the Great Depression and runs a business that's probably not very profitable. <laughs> and she makes bathtub, like, liquor. Yeah, it's great. She's Every <laughs> scene she is in is like, wow, this is, like, actually decent. <laughs> <laughs> actually decent. This, this is watchable. I could I could tolerate this. What do you think of Tim um, Curry as her brother Rooster? Uh, I feel like they went a little overboard around the end when he decides he just wants to murder <laughs> Annie. But I think yeah, the performance I'm a, is very I'm good. I'm agree with you. Like that's probably the moment where I'm like, <laughs> kids movie. And that's probably the one time when John Houston's like, you need steaks. Try to throw her off a bridge. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. She's holding up for dear life. He's same- trying to pry her fingers off on the bridge. At the same time, I mean, like, aren't you just in this for a little bit of money? Do you, you really? I, I, I guess wanna... they do that in the 99 movie, too, though, because he's like, I'll just kill her after we're done. Like, yeah, Jesus. but that's more like a veil threat instead of him, like, holding her head underwater or whatever. Yeah, he he's really into the murder thing here. So, <laughs> like, cut that 20 minutes earlier and they're, like, dancing around the fucking orphanage. Easy street. <laughs> that number is so Murder good in the kids. 82 version. <laughs> uh, yeah, so there's, there's a good amount of good stuff in this. I, think, I hate the dance honestly, numbers. I, I hate the dance numbers in this. The extent, And I know they only well. did it because they had um, Anne Ranking, and they knew that she's the closest thing to a Bob Fosse dance that they could probably get. Eh, they're okay. They're not impressive enough to be worth putting into the movie, though, to be honest. Agreed. And there's a bunch of... There, there's no big omissions. Like, they're not going to cut. But Tomorrow isn't sung until, like, two-thirds into the movie. Like, they play it as the opening credit thing, but they don't actually sing it as a song in the story until the movie's almost over, which is a weird choice. And it's being used as, like, a political song in that moment, too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's just they, a weird choice. Just they they put it at the beginning and then they sing they sing that dumb dog song. I don't is that even from the show? No, no. There were two songs written especially for this movie, and both of them are god awful. They're written by the original people who did the Broadway show, but they're very bad additions. One, uh, no, three songs because there's dumb dog, there's Sandy because we have need two fucking songs. Oh to yeah, do yeah. Character two development songs. for this dog. <laughs> Two songs back to back about this stupid dog. Yes. Like, who cares? And then we have Let's Go to the Movies, which replaces what is probably my favorite song in the entire Broadway show, NYC. And it's just such a cheese ball song that makes me want to fucking slip my wrist. Yeah, that song's not very good. I agree. And it um, goes on forever. It goes on for fucking also, it- ever. And like Dumb Dog and Sandy are so pointless. And the Dumb Dog song doesn't even make sense. Because she's saying, like, that she thinks the dog is stupid for following her, but then she just mm-hmm. adopts the dog, like, immediately afterwards. It's like, <laughs> what is even <laughs> happening here? Exactly, and it's... But a lot of the broad strokes of the show and the story, it's there. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. I think, like, they cut some good stuff with NYC for sure. And, mm-hmm. I mean, tomorrow, I don't even know how you go about not including that, but whatever. <laughs> um but I, I i like a lot of the stuff they did in this at the same time mm. <clears throat> what do you any, like everything what are you gonna defend everything with miss hannigan is perfect everything okay. with miss hannigan is perfect um i i like the weird bridge thing at the end because i think it's <laughs> just so absurd and hilarious <laughs> like like i don't know it just goes off the rails 
it's like it's it's like the right amount of terrible that it's like hilarious so i kind of like that um and that's about it <laughs> although that's a, uh, that's a lot for me to like uh that's a lot for me to like in annie so <laughs> um i liked the hard knock life scene it feels really big and kind of bombastic yeah, oh, you know I think what? you're it... right you're right the hard knock life stuff and and the fact that annie's voice isn't like awful it helps a lot of the songs too and she actually has naturally curly hair it's not just like somehow curled at the end that always bothered me in the broadway show because of brandy <laughs> but yeah she actually looks the part like the entire yeah. movie yeah she feels like a real gutter snipe i, I just hate annie because she's so uppity all the freaking time i think at the end after we're done talking about each of these movies we should just go into everything wrong with annie because i i got some <laughs> hold on we need to talk about one more song that was added for this movie that is just oh, right, right. trash sign which is possibly the worst song ever in a movie musical yeah, I... you spend your evenings in the shanties you had me follow imbibing quarts of bathtub gin bronchitis and here you're dancing in your scanties great camps with some old geezer called little caesar he's an uncle you lock the orphans in the closet they love it you huck their christmas souvenirs drink you steal the funds you should deposit it's fresh you make them grovel while you buy lavaliers you must you upset me why don't you pet me Hit you a grave now, let's misbehave now. And some you want a smoochie, my little poochie. Jail? Jail? I guess I'll never know the feeling jail. of running fingers through your hair. And sing, sing. I guess this means no bonus iris. Will you sign? Well, I don't need you. That's fine. To just forget the dotted line. What is even the point? <laughs> you remember that song, right? <laughs> Like vaguely, could you could you sing it for the for the audience here? Because I doubt they remember it either. You lock away the Christmas goodies. <laughs> Sign. Oh God! And yes. she's like Why? falling into her bathtub, and she's like trying to touch on his head, and it's like re- weirdly sexual. And basically, Carol Burnett gets to do her shtick for about three minutes. It's bad. She likes a very dry martini. She likes a very wet souffle. Cut it. Get rid of it. Throw it into the dumpster. Sorry to interrupt you in the middle of the show, but we've got a shill at you. Today's show is brought to you by the extremely kind donation by our donors over at Patreon. Our current patrons are Stephanie L., Terry Needleman, Max Lunig, Benjamin Lair, Lily Ackles, Ackles. Mackenzie Horner, John, John Donna, Donna, Taryn, Taryn the, the Duck, Duck, Melissa Goldman, Jess Guess Lightning, Lightning, Ewan Cassidy, oh, Ellen McDonald, Tesquera, Catelyn McLeod, Fire <laughs> September, Mina Maneri, Monica Thoreau, Brent Black, Haley Murray, Elton Wonderland, 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 B-Way Flicks, Mary Flicks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad these people are giving us money just to muddle through their names. But they give us a little extra financial support that helps us get the lights on here at Musicals with Cheese. If you would like to join them in supporting us and get tons of fun perks such as patron only commentaries, them. our episodes day earlier, even earlier, and so much more shit, just come on over on our Patreon. Draw. Come on our Patreon. Alright, are you ready to get back to it and talk about the Annie? Yes, let's talk about more Annie. It's about the music audiences around the world have cherished for a generation. The sun will come out tomorrow. Bet your bottom dollar that tomorrow there'll be sun. It's about the characters who make you believe anything is possible. (laughs) It's about a little girl with hope in her smile and the uncanny ability to melt the heart of even the most scrupulous billionaire. Who are you? I'm Annie. All right, let me set the scene for you. 1999. (laughs) We need another Annie movie. (laughs) (laughs) Guys, you know what we haven't had in like, I don't know, 18 years almost? (laughs) Another Annie movie. Why don't we make another one? We could contact those guys from the Disney Channel. I'm sure they'll make a good one. It was made for the wonderful world of Disney, which was like proto Disney Channel. Yeah. And it sucks about as bad as a Disney Channel freaking like <laughs> it's awful. It's you, so you bad. Think it's this on one's... Disney Plus. So you can check it out. Do you think this one's really <laughs> bad? 
I don't like it at all. Honestly, I was all so right. bored through the whole thing. Well, let's let's dive into this. Why don't you like it? Okay, Annie's vocal tone is awful. Whoever they got to play Annie just sucks. Dude, she's sorry, a kid. But she's a kid. Not sorry. I don't care. If a child's going to sing on my on my screen into my headphones and I have to hear it, then they better be good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what else didn't you like? Um Miss Hannigan is lame. They don't do anything yes. fun with her in this. Do you know why? Why? Because Kathy Bates had just won an Oscar and they wanted to either use her a lot or use her a little. So they use her a lot and make her just play up her usual Kathy Bates stick, which is be angry. Yeah, it sucks. Yeah, she's pretty uh, lame. They probably also because it's like late 90s, they probably couldn't portray her as like a drunk in a kid's movie. So, yeah, and this one is lame. ranking up like cranking up the kid's movie side of it. It's going full, full oh, children's movie, full kid's movie. Yeah uh warbucks isn't even like angry and he he uh he becomes like super nice like one scene in and it's like okay whatever <laughs> he, he he victor garber just by his nature just kind of calms you it by his presence he's even when he's trying to be like who are you and they're like yeah you're a teddy bear fuck you yeah it's like he's not even even in the very first scene where he's like almost about to kick annie out he's not even like threatening in any way whereas right. if you go back to the 82 one like He's like about to grab her by the neck and throw her out the window. <laughs> Do I smell wet dog? <laughs> In this one, he's just like, he just says the line like, uh, orphans are supposed to be boys. And she's like, oh, can I please stay? And he's like, oh, all right. That's it. <laughs> And you kind of don't get any of the really, I'm frustrated by your existence in this and the way that you get in the 82 film. Yeah. Where you're just I, trying to get your work done and then there's this kid flying an airplane all around you. Yeah. Like, they cut so much of that and there's like, there's no edge to it, man. There's no edge. Mm -mm. With that being said, it is closer to the Broadway show than the 82 film. I'm not sure that's a, saying anything good, though, because if that's true, then the Broadway show probably sucks. <laughs> well, the thing is, and now we're going to talk about comparisons. I like this version a little better just because I like the vocal quality of the song and there's a bunch more songs I actually like in this and there's not five minutes wasted on songs I don't like. So they that's cut true. the songs. They did cut the, they did cut the BS, got rid of the yeah. bullshit, and they included... They included the tomorrow part, which is, like, kind of important. <laughs> you know, a little bit. All right. Well, now that since Jess is a little bit off the rails, let me just go into why this sucks so much. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Andy you is trash. Okay. <laughs> okay. I, I think Annie is so politically confused and it doesn't know what it wants to be in any way. It's like... It's like a book written by Ayn Rand, but they cut all the libertarian stuff. And it's like, what is even happening in this? I don't understand what is going on. All these um, people are terrible and I hate it. <laughs> yes. Um, it was weird. So, OK, I remember where I was going. Um, so the 99 okay. film, a lot of things are here that were in the Broadway show that wasn't in the 82 film. Um, but there's things that were in the 82 film that were in the Broadway show that isn't in the 99 film. So let's go into that. So much... Um, sure. Miss Hannigan is very much an alcoholic in the Broadway show, much like the 82 film, and they don't even hint at that in the 99 film. She's just kind of normal, put-upon woman. She's just a meanie. She's just a big meanie. She big yells meanie. at people a lot. She yells, and she... Well, they even kind of dis dissuade you from that. She's like, I've never hit any of you, but you threaten, and that's worse. And I'm like, is it? Is it, yeah. though? Is it, though? I mean, it's not... It's not good, but is it worse than actually yeah. hitting them? I don't know about that. <laughs> I'm going to say, we're going to have to check the Bible for that one. I'm not sure that's I'm gonna okay. I'm going to have to check the Bible. It says in the Bible that you can't do that. <laughs> actually, this says you should hit your kids. Come here. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> Hang on. Hang on. <laughs> um, I also like the songs that they added, as I said before. Um, but this does cut um the political leaning, and... FDR does just kind of come out of nowhere because they cut the visit that she had to see FDR. Yeah, they just he just shows up and he's like, I solved all the problems. Ha ha. Here I, I mean, am. It's that way in the musical, too. But you see him before, at least. And you yeah, set him up. set up like 
Like this one, it's set up technically because he mentions that they're going to go for he's going to come over for dinner and that's it. Yeah. (laughs) Um, But in the Broadway show, and this is where the biggest change between both versions are. It's a very political show. Like the very final song is a song. It's not tomorrow. It's not anything like that. It's sung by um, uh, the Roosevelt and it's called A New Deal for Christmas. That's basically like, we're about to fix everything. We've got a new deal for Christmas. Warbucks is like, I don't agree with this at all. (laughs) Basically. (laughs) (laughs) And there's also up when Annie is hiding away, she hides in a Hooverville. And there's an entire song and it's like a really dark, nice song. And when I saw it, when I first saw the national tour, I was like, why isn't this in every version? It's so cool sounding. And it's called, we'd like to thank you, Herbert Hoover. And they're all like... I, I I used to live in like this giant house and now I'm on the street. What the fuck happened? Today we're living in a shanty. Today we're surrounding for a meal. Today I'm stealing coal for fires. Who knew I could steal? I used to winter in the tropics. I spent my summers at the shore. And it's just these homeless people shitting on Herbert Hoover. So that's that's actually interesting because in these movies they cut all that out and like yes any uh, any adult that's watching you can't help but think like Warbucks is hoarding all this money in the Great Depression but he's the good guy right like and ex- what's going on here <laughs> and that without those numbers you don't have the like kind of underline of allowing you to make sense of all this nonsense i just want to say that annie is in the luckiest position possible because she's going to inherit all that money and she's never going to work a day in her life all because she's a happy smiley little orphan because she could sing andrew can your orphan sing didn't think so yeah what about all the other orphans in the orphanage does warbucks give a shit about them i don't think so is Warbucks going to donate money to other orphans or is he just going to invite one orphan over and then adopt her? And that's all problem solved. We did it. Well, I hate no. this. In the end of the Broadway <laughs> show, in all fairness, um, Miss Hannigan is brought o- has the orphans brought over so she could be arrested alongside Rooster and um, Lily, which is they come to go pick up Annie and ha- Miss Hannigan's also there for unrelated reasons. All the orphans get presents and... <laughs> Herbert who or not Herbert Hoover, FDR was going to see to it each of you orphans get adopted. The president himself. Oh, that's, that's so great. What about all the other orphans in all of New York City? Are they getting adopted too? Is, is Roosevelt going to see to it? But no, he can see to it finding Annie's real parents before these guys try to throw her off a bridge. Yeah, we got to get the uh, got to get the FBI involved with uh, finding this little girl's <laughs> parents. Well, the, th- the thing about the 82 movie is they set up FDR, but they never pay him off, so to say. Like, you have that set up so you know, oh, it's not random that he comes in, saves the day, and figures out who these people are with the help of the FBI. Um, instead, he shows up, and then he's there at the end at their I got adopted party. I got adopted. I got adopted. <laughs> I just can't, I can't help but feel a little bad for, like, Miss Hannigan. Why? I mean, she treats these kids badly, but I mean, Daddy Warbucks, I mean, how many sweatshops does he does he fucking run? <laughs> uh, I mean, what so what is his business? Like, do they ever say what he does? Well, they don't call him Warbucks for nothing. <laughs> is he a war profiteer? I mean, I'm sure he's a war profiteer of some kind. He has to be, right? I don't know. Maybe not. It is the it is before World War Two happened. So he yeah. might not be. Um, um, but he does say he runs a lot of factories and they're closing down. So I'm sure he's laying off a ton of employees um, just to make sure he can keep that money. Uh, mm-hmm. And I bet you those factories aren't in, in very good condition considering what time period this is. 
<laughs> right, right, right. Do you think it was a good thing that <laughs> they cut Punjab in the ass from this new version? Um, I mean, as far as uh, uh, ability to exist in 2019, yes. <laughs> but do I want this movie to exist in 2019? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Andrew, let's go into the song numbers. There's actually quite a few, like, decent songs in this. Mm-hmm. I just I just hate the story in the singers a lot because Annie how is always is. a little girl. Yeah. Annie's always a little girl and little girls can't sing. And so that's why this show always sucks. one of the better I want songs out there because it's a way of her ask saying what she wants without saying it if that makes sense she wants her parents yeah but it's also now like <laughs> I wish I had my mom and dad they would love me so much it's like maybe this is the life I could have which is so much more powerful than I want this yeah lyrically I think and it's really realizes, good in its simplicity I love her character arc you know she goes from <laughs> wanting her parents to realizing that her parents are dead and she's just going to have to settle for this billionaire. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's her being dead set on having her birth parents, then realizing it doesn't matter as long as you're being taken care of. Yeah, it doesn't matter as long as your person caring for you has a billion dollars and also a bunch of servants that can cater to your every whim. I mean, you're not wrong, but also I, I see the broader <laughs> point of this show, whereas you're looking at the facts. <laughs> I'm looking at what's actually there, and you're like, well, this is what I would have done if I wrote it, but you didn't I'm write fucking, it. Okay? No, I didn't say that. <laughs> I was just telling you the intention of the writers, and I can feel that in there. You can say whether or not they don't nailed care. the landing, but this was what I feel like was the intention. Jess, Jess looks at a plane crash where, like, everyone died and the plane <laughs> is, like, half in the ground. And he's like, well, I could see the pilots really tried to land the plane. <laughs> <laughs> you see, the, the the rolly wheels were out, so they weren't trying to crash it. Yeah, you could you could see the pilots were really trying to put this right on the runway there. They just missed by a few miles. <laughs> you know, I've seen worse plane crashes out there. You know, I've seen ones where they just nose first in, but this this tumbled a bit. There was some. <laughs> Good job, Jess. You really, you really, uh, you gave it the benefit of the doubt there, Jess. <laughs> You're really pulling out your boss tonight, tonight. Oh, I am. I'm feeling it. <laughs> <laughs> you might as well play Annie with all with that accent you got there. Ah, uh, I, I do more of a Boston than a New York, I think. But bet you they're good. Bet you they're smart. <laughs> uh, if Annie was a little Boston girl, she'd just be beating the shit out of everybody in this. <laughs> She does that in the 82 movie, though. She does. Uh, I, I just like the 82 movie so much better. Because she beats the shit out of people. I'm a fucking boys little, up. No, she does that. Like, she's gonna she's gonna beat those boys up. And then they look back and she does this the least threatening thing ever. Where she holds her fist up and does like a cutesy smile. And it's like, and they keep running away. Like, what? Get out of here. No, she does like a pouty face. <laughs> Like a, mm. Yeah, I hate it. I hate it. But that. you love the 82 movie. <laughs> but I love the 82 movie. Quote unquote, love the 82 movie. Because, Andrew, how do you know she's a strong, <laughs> independent woman unless she beats the shit out of some men? Um, well, 
Number one, maybe just actually have her beat the shit out of the men. I would have been fine with that. Having her do a pouty face while she holds her fist up and looks cute. That sucks. Okay. I don't. Yeah. No, don't do that. It's the hard knock life for us. It's the hard knock life for us. Instead of treated, we get tricked. Instead of kisses, we get kicked. It's the hard knock life. All right. Let's talk about it's the hard knock life. I'm in. This life yeah. is a hard knock one. Yeah, this gets referenced by like everything. Yeah, How Austin Powers of three this song exist. Austin Powers three did it. Um, that, that's the only one I can think of. <laughs> there's definitely more, but I can't think of them at the moment. Austin sure Powers three and it. nothing else. No, they they've never referenced Hard Knock Life, but they've referenced. Um, um, I think I'm gonna like it here. Yeah, they have. I think they've done Hard Knock Life too. Honestly, I honestly don't think so. Or maybe. Maybe that was American Dad or Cleveland Show. <laughs> the best things that <laughs> animation has brought us. Just start quoting Ted 2 and see how many people laugh. Uh, Ted 2, hilarious. All right. Almost uh, as funny as it's A Million Ways life. to Die in the West. It's fine. It's a cute song. It's iconic for a reason. All right, fair enough. What do you think of Tomorrow? It's nice. <laughs> it's a fine song. It's iconic for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> Everything around me Little If I ring little necks Surely I would get an acquittal Some women are dripping with diamonds Some women are dripping with pearls Lucky me, lucky me Look at what I'm dripping with What do you think of little girls? I like little girls. I think that that's oh, just a put, little hold on, I hold think. on. Just put that put that right there on the poster. I like little girls. Andrew DeWolf musicals with cheese. Quote unquote, not a pedophile. I like little girls. <laughs> well, I mean, some people are just drowning in uh, little girls or, or dripping yeah. with little girls. That's worse. That's worse. <laughs> <laughs> Um, why do you like this song so much? I mean, I like it too, but... I think it's just because it's there's no little girl singing it. It's just Miss Hannigan, and so there's an adult singing, and I like it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I think the song is great. It is nihilistic in the best ways. Yes. And uh, honestly, I think this song is... The like, I Want Miss song, Hannigan the hero the, song. This Miss Hannigan is just the most relatable character in the show, because like, I can't relate to billionaire Daddy Warbucks... Or ridiculous optimist Annie, like <laughs> I Ms. think Hannigan Sandy is, is like, the most relatable character in the show. What? What? Where am I going? Okay, I'm going over here. Sandy's a dog who is receiving <laughs> stage directions with me. <laughs> Fair, yeah, I guess. Which honestly, that is kind of relatable. <laughs> What, easy street what do you think of easy street um i love easy street it's fun it's a really fun song it's a great villain song that you can actually hum along it's not just like i'm evil it's more like here's the goal that we're trying to get to and in act two we're gonna have something that'll come up and we want to get to it easy street <sighs> i like easy street. easy street i like easy street that's a fine song I like it, um, but I, then I two. miss it. I'm missing the 82 version, how they don't really have the intro to it. And the how intro is my the, favorite the part. It's like, Mother dear, how we know you're down there listening. How do we follow your sweet advice to, you know, that, that part, like joke about their mom like, being in like hell. The, 
You just like the part because the mom's in hell. That's what that's. Yes, I like it. And because it kind of (laughs) it builds up to a joke because there is no in between choruses in the 82 film. They just go easy street and they just sing that over and over again and they don't have a break. It's just that over and over and over again where I feel like it kind of lands better as a joke and as a fun song where you're like, oh, here they go again. Whereas this is just like, oh, they're going, they're going, oh, they're going, they're, they're going, they're going, oh, they just keep going. Yeah, but but they dance, though. And it's ridiculous. They The dancing is ridiculous. Like, it's Carol Burnett doing slapstick while Tim Curry and Bernadette Peters chew she- scenery. Everyone's doing the thing they do best. I know, I know. Sad that Tim Curry can't dance anymore. He can't even walk anymore. That's sad. It's so sad. All right, then Act Two is all reprises, so we're done. <laughs> My speeches are greeted with thunderous acclaim at two universities bearing. Something was missing each time I got through. That something was someone, but who? I want to talk about one song. <laughs> one song in Act 2. Sure. Um, It's actually my favorite song in the entire show, and it's cut from the 82 movie, and it's enough for me to hate the 82 movie in, uh, as is. And it's called Something is w- Missing, which is Warbucks' basic confession, why I, I want to be your father and I'm dedicating to being your dad because I didn't realize I was missing something in my life until you wandered in. And it's a sincere moment where Annie has the big change of deciding, yeah, I guess you could be my father. And you don't have that in the 1982 Annie movie. Yeah, but at the same time, who cares? This song sucks. Fuck you. Why does this song suck? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's fine. I don't know. I, I just feel like the Warbucks Annie relationship is so unbelievable that really nothing helps. And this song is like a band aid. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think it's so unrelatable? <laughs> okay, billionaire guy who literally a few days ago didn't think orphans could be girls suddenly wants to be the father to a little girl who is whose spirit is unshaken by literally everything. Um, yeah, it, these two people can't exist. These what do you have against optimism, exist. Andrew? Optimism is stupid. And if any of you are optimistic, you're stupid. <laughs> Uh, it depends to a point. I mean, if you're a true optimist, would never see the bad things in anything, which Annie does do that. Um, so she's stupid. And technically, in the show, she ends up being correct. But if this show was in real life, um, she'd be thrown she'd off be a bridge. Rotting, <laughs> she would be thrown off a bridge or, or rotting in an orphanage. <laughs> you know, I'm fun sorry. Fact. There's no there's in real life. There's no man with a big turban that he can tie to a helicopter and then hang from to save you. OK, <laughs> You're just a girl splat on the ground. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, fun fact, and I'm very interested in your opinion on this. There was a production of Annie um, about 10 years ago, it has to be, and they did the entire show all the way through. They just changed one thing, and it was, and they, they got in a lot of trouble for doing it. At the end, after the big song and everything, everything fades away, and Annie's back in her rags, and she's back in the orphanage, and it was all a dream. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's brilliant. <laughs> oh man, that's brilliant. and she's just that's there genius. singing. I don't need anything but you. <laughs> and then and then the audience goes. <laughs> they stand up and cheer. <laughs> Yes, okay. a thousand I, I like Tonys. That better. You do? I like that ending better. They will never let anyone do that ending again because the one theater that tried it, they got shut down. Yeah, well, it's better. It's a better ending. Why do you think it's a better ending? More realistic? Uh, more realistic. 
Uh, you lose the political edge because now you don't have to think about whether or not Warbucks is a good person or not because he's not real. Um, and and uh, Annie's parents, you know, may, there is a there's optimism there because you know maybe maybe her parents are still alive. Maybe yeah, that was maybe. just part of the dream. You know, who knows? Mm-hmm. Um, but Andrew, here's the other thing: you are a connoisseur of cheese in the form of musical theater. This is I the am. cheesiest musical on the planet. Why don't you like this? It's uh, cheesy in the worst possible ways. I need more elaboration and, uh, on I that. I can explain. I can explain it in one word, actually. Yes. Children. <laughs> I thought it was going to be orphans, but ex- why do you have against children? You like <laughs> you liked Matilda that had children in it. I did like Matilda, but Matilda was carried by an adult very hard, and this show tries. But Miss Hannigan, I'm sorry, she's not as good as uh, the other person's. I can't remember their Trunchbull. name. But the other person, Trunchbull. They're not nearly as good. Uh, and Miss Hannigan's not in it nearly enough. Um, yeah. And Warbucks kind of sucks. Um, in this show, uh, this show and in and, uh, and Matilda are honestly really similar, but Matilda just does everything better. <laughs> now, uh, as someone coming into this without knowing much about Annie, but you apparently have seen it before, but you know how popular this show is. This thing is like gangbuster popular. Yeah, I know. I've just, I've never liked it ever. <laughs> I don't even really know what it is. But my question is, uh, do you think it's deserving wait. of that popularity? Uh, based on songs alone, I suppose. You think the songs are actually really good then? Yeah, I think most of the songs are really good. I just I just hate how this is put together. I hate the themes. I hate the characters. Um, I, I just can't stand it. <laughs> and you maybe watch it twice, Jess, okay? So, whatever. <laughs> hmm. Well, we're going to take a moment... And talk about what else has become of Annie the musical before we wrap this up. Oh, God. What else happened in in Annie? We really don't want to talk about the other versions. And if we leave this open, we're going to ask about it, right? Okay. So let's just wrap that fucking shit up. All right. So. So the first thing that ever happened with Annie after this very, very popular Broadway show is they tried to make sequels. Well, I mean, <coughs> why not? Have Annie and Daddy Warbucks go on an adventure with Punjab, and we can call it uh, a- Annie the Adventure 2. Well, the first sequel they tried to do was called Annie 2, Miss Hannigan's Revenge. we only been together for such a little time. And, and now there's going to be somebody else. And everything... You and me is going to be all different. Of course it is. Changes. Changes. That's what life's about. Changes. Often turn you inside out. And it opened at the John F. Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts in Washington, D.C. in December of 1989. To universally disastrous reviews, extensive reworking of the script and score proved futile and the project ended before reaching Broadway. That was the first one. Well, did Miss Hannigan get her revenge? Her revenge was that the show wasn't popular. Damn. I just want to see Miss Hannigan beat, beat her. I just want to see Miss Hannigan come in swoop in and take all daddy warbucks's money and that's the end of the show and a, and a messy <laughs> divorce yes <laughs> in 1993 a second attempt with a different plot and different score titled annie warbucks was developed in a workshop at the goodspeed opera house under the direction of michael p price where the original annie enjoyed its world premiere in 1976 it subsequently opened off broadway at the variety arts theater where it ran for 200 performances Um, I'm just going to give you a little bit of a plot synopsis of it, just in case you're interested. On Christmas morning in 1933, when Child Welfare Commissioner Harriet Doyle 
replacing the original's Miss Hannigan as the villain of the piece, arrives on the scene to inform Daddy Warbucks he must marry within 60 days or else the child will be returned to the orphanage. Daddy Warbucks' whirlwind search to find a fitting bride uncovers not only a plot by Doyle and her daughter Sheila Kelly to strip him of his fortune, but also his true feeling for his life to his longtime assistant Grace Farrell. A gaggle of cute girls seeking parents and President Franklin Delano Roosevelt return to take part in the shenanigans. It's basically the Santa Claus 2, the um, I was the just going to say that. This is literally just the Santa <laughs> Claus 2. <laughs> but this beat, this came out like 20 years before the Santa, 10 years before the Santa Claus 2. So honestly, who ripped off who? The Santa Claus 2 rips off Annie 2 in maybe the worst Tim Allen fiasco of all time. And apparently this got really good reviews. So how come no one likes it? Um, never it never made it to Broadway. It. No one, I mean, it probably doesn't hold a candle to the original as far as songs come, but it was probably fine. Oh, it because their investors pulled out before it could go to Broadway, so it basically went nowhere. Fair enough. How come no one else put it on, though? I don't know. I don't know. Why would, I mean, I guess the question is, why would you do Annie Warbucks when you could just do Annie? Which makes sense. All right, well, we're going to revive Annie Warbucks. We're doing it. All right, gonna Andrew, who are you going to play? Two. We're going to call <laughs> it the Santa Claus 2, Annie Warbucks. <laughs> All right, but the uh, last thing we have to, to talk about... Yes, the last thing we have to talk about is the 2014 film, Andrew. Um. Yeah, that's the... What do we call that? Bad Annie? Bad Annie. Yes, yes, yes. Um, it... <laughs> It was, it won a bunch of Razzies, um, including Worst Remake, and um, Cameron Diaz was nominated for Worst Supporting Actress. Perfect. And uh, I have actually, look good. I have actually seen it, and believe it or not, it isn't good. <laughs> what? Really? I should be anywhere but here. Private plane, on the I am going to play a clip right now of their version of Little Girls and just let that sink in for a second. And just remember, as bad as the original Annie is, it can get so much worse. Uh, wow, wasn't that bad? Uh, Did you know Will Smith produced that film um, originally envisioning it as a, a role for his daughter Willow? Are you serious? Yes. So Will Smith is a producer on this film. But then um, pulled out as acting in the role because it was supposed to be him and Willow playing Annie and Daddy Warbucks, and that didn't work out. So Jamie Foxx stepped in with Quivangene Walls. Okay, I have to say, everything that Will Smith does to try to make his kids famous is the worst thing ever to exist. Jay-Z also produced this film. Okay, that's not true. You're just making that up. No, no, I'm looking at the, the list right here. Yeah. What, whatever, I don't care who produced it. Annie sucks, and this version of Annie is probably the worst one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I would agree with that. <laughs> it, it's not good. She can't read in this one? Like, that's a big plot point, is that her character doesn't know how to read? Is that racist? <laughs> it might be, but... <sighs> it might be. Uh, Punjab, can we get your input on this? What do you think? Is that racist? <laughs> Punjab, is it racist? <laughs> Punjab, email the show. Tell us if it's racist. <laughs> but you know who definitely isn't racist? Me. Yes. All right, Andrew, what is your overall thoughts on <laughs> Annie and your cheese rating? Uh, my overall thoughts on Annie are that children should be locked in my basement. I mean, someone else's basement <laughs> um, and not allowed on stage ever. Um, and uh, my cheese rating is uh, a pile of garbage. <laughs> Holy shit. That is the most <laughs> negative you've ever been on something. Like, we have 100% done worse stuff than this. 
<laughs> I have an unnatural hate for Annie, and I don't, I can't explain it, and we're not allowed to talk about Annie ever again, because there's no way I can be objective about it. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, Andrew. Annie is fine. It's not the greatest thing in the world. It's a little too cheesy for me. Um, I listened to maybe and um, you know, something was missing every now and then. NYC is my go-to workout song, so it's not like this is a bad show. It's just not that great, and it's gotten a little overplayed, and maybe in another 14 years we'll try a remake again, and it won't be terrible. Um, and I give maybe. it... Um, <sighs> but I'll be here saying maybe... I give it I a plate else. with nothing on it as my cheese rating because it's the Great Depression. Don't don't be wasted it on cheese frivolities. Neither one of us gave it any actual cheese. And maybe now this prayer, the last one of its kind, you'll be there calling me baby, maybe. All right. I mean, real talk though, Annie's fine. The music's it's fine. fine. I just don't it's like fine. it. I just don't like it. But thank you for listening to our show. Uh, <laughs> please follow us on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, at Musicals with Cheese. We're on Twitter, at Cheesy Musicals. Our Patreon is Musicals with Cheese. Come show us some love there. Our Instagram is Musicals with Cheese. Our YouTube page is Musicals with Cheese. And we have a lot of brand new stuff on our YouTube. Check it out. Um, You're going to like it. Um, Our email is MusicalTheaterLives at gmail.com. Our title card is created by the incredible Jolene Casco. Follow her on Instagram, at Jolene Casco. Andrew, is there anything else you want to say before we wrap this shit on up? The sun will come out tomorrow. I sang it pretty good. What do you think? I, I give you an A+. We'll see you next time on Musicals with Cheese. Cheese. <laughs>